The S&B intake that we have here today would be a great choice for the 2019 and newer 6.7 Cummins owners out there who might be looking for one of the nicest sealed options available at a very attractive price point. Now the five-star rated S&B will feature a durable ABS plastic build. You got the reusable high flow dry filter and will not require the use of any custom or can tuning for right around that high $300 price point. All right guys, so intakes like the SNB here are one of those gateway mods that oftentimes gets truck owners a little bit more comfortable with modifying their own rigs at home. Now, not only is there an instant improvement in both appearance and performance, but I think the satisfaction of tackling something like this in the driveway or garage really just builds confidence for the next round of modifications. Now, with all that being said, the SMB that we have here today is easily one of the most popular in the category for the 6.7 Cummins HD Ram with well over 100 five-star reviews. And as always, guys, going to encourage you to read up on some of those reviews first, as it's definitely nice to hear from other Ram owners about how they're digging the SMB on their truck or maybe how they're not. So again, check those out. You can also browse some of the customer submitted images while you're there as well. Now, as far as your major components are concerned, gang, well, I have them laid out here on the table and two biggies jump right out at me. Uh, first and foremost, you are getting what is called a sealed enclosure and one, by the way, that's been designed and built very well. Now, these sealed enclosures are always gonna get a big thumbs up from me as they're ultimately your best bet in reducing high intake air temperatures under the hood, especially when the truck is stationary, sitting in traffic and so on. Now, when the truck is moving, not a big deal, right? Because you're getting some fresh air through the front of the truck. But if you're the type of owner sits in a lot of traffic, you're towing all the time in bumper to bumper stuff, uh, especially in a hot climate, well, this can really be a factor and contribute to a sluggish feeling rig. But with a sealed enclosure, that really shouldn't be a huge concern because again, you are isolating the filter from all of that hot engine bay air, unlike other options that might expose the filter. You get a little bit more sound out of it, but it certainly is prone to the heat soak we just talked about. Uh, now, speaking of the filter here, guys, you are looking at one of S&B's signature dry filters, and this thing is giant, right? Easily one of the largest in the category. Now, general rule of thumb here when we're talking filters is that oiled options, might flow a little bit better, whereas dry filters will ultimately capture more particles, but the difference is gonna be pretty minute overall, especially when we're talking about a sealed enclosure. Um, now, we do have an oiled option from S&B for the 6.7 trucks. If you are interested in that, uh, you can find that here on the site for a similar price point. Now, the good thing to keep in mind with the dry filter is that they don't require nearly as much maintenance as those oiled filters. Uh, oiled filter, yes, they can be cleaned with water and so forth and dried and re-oiled. Can't really clean these in that sense, but what you can do is blow them out with some compressed air and it's a lot easier, a lot less maintenance, you're not re-oiling it. And you are still getting some pretty good longevity out of the filter itself. But what about benefits? Let's talk about some of those real quick here, guys. We did briefly talk about the filter, but this guy will actually save you money in the long run as opposed to replacing those paper element factory filters every 10,000 miles or so. So that is the first benefit, I would think. But outside of that, obviously a more modified underhood appearance is one. Also, we're talking slight bump in both horsepower and torque. Uh, and that's because SMB claims that the intake is going to outperform your stock system by over 50% which in turn should lead to some pretty solid gains overall. Now, some other owners out there have mentioned things like improved throttle response, maybe even better fuel economy, but those are certainly kind of on the smaller end of the spectrum. Uh, certainly not going to install something like this and get another two, three miles per gallon out of your truck. Simply not gonna happen, but some owners out there have expressed some benefits in regards to throttle response and things like that. Now the rest of the kit is pretty straightforward. We talked at length about the filter itself here along with your air box, both real solid, but you're also getting a very nice roto-molded plastic intake tube along with all of your hardware, fittings, couplers, all that good stuff needed to get the system in place. Another one of the cool things about the S&B here, guys, is that it does feature a plexiglass window to cover the filter and that way you can actually keep an eye on the filter, the condition of the filter and get a better idea whenever it's time to clean this thing which really should be some pretty long intervals, of course, depending on where you live. Now, this kit does not require any custom or can tuning. So again, HD owners out there can bolt this thing up and go, enjoy some of those benefits right out of the box. 
without the need for anything else. Finally, guys, the system is backed by s and signature million mile warranty, uh, just in case you ever run into any issues there. But now we want to segue into the installation process and show you just what it takes to get the s and in place on your Ram at home. Uh, site's going to call it solid one out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter and about an hour or so to complete from start to finish. But to give you a better idea of just how things will go down, here is an American Trucks customer to walk you through it now. All right, so here's a breakdown of the generalized tools you'll need for this removal and install of the SMB filters cold air intake. Uh, I am using an electric tool, but you don't have to use that. You can also use obviously a manual socket wrench. You're gonna need a few different size sockets. So what you're gonna need is a 10 millimeter. That's gonna be for most of your bolts that are connecting anything. You're gonna need a 7 16 um, this is going to be for the SMB filter itself. There's going to be a bracket you need to attach. A 5 16 that's going to be for all the clamps that hold to the couplers. That's going to help you do that. An extension, if you have one or need one. It always worked out really well for me, especially a flexible one, because you're able to get into those tight spots. You're going to need a T20 uh, Torx bit. That's going to be for the sensor to remove them from the stock pipe. A trim panel removal tool or a Flat blade will work to take out the push lock pins for any of the trim panels in the front of the engine bay, uh, as well as a small flat blade to pop off one of the sensors uh, wiring harness. And then I use a 10 millimeter uh, ratchet box in. That's for the battery disconnect and any easy to reach bolts. So this is the setup I have. I do have a chuck just in case I don't need the extension. That's all that really is. So pretty generalized tools. Most individuals will have this in your, you know, garage. So this is what's going to show. It's very easy to get this part installed uh, by your do-it-yourselfer in your driveway. So let's get started. All right, guys. So the first step we have to do is you do have to take off your negative terminal. Uh, the instructions say this because the newer cars will hold memory for a little bit longer and you want to make sure that you have no power going if you're going to be removing any electrical connectors, which we are, the sensors that are in the stock intake. So what you want to do is you want to loosen your negative terminal and you want to remove it and then you want to let it sit for at least an hour, it says. So go ahead and remove this as your first step so you don't have to worry about it. If you can put it out of the way like I'm doing, go ahead. If not, go ahead and put a rubber glove or anything else that will stop it from coming back and touching and reconnecting. Uh, that's what I would suggest. And they'll move on to the next step. Okay guys, so the next step is on these 2500s, you have dual batteries. So you're gonna wanna kinda come over here to the passenger side and do the same thing you did to the driver's side. Obviously using a 10 millimeter, um, I'm using obviously a ratchet box end wrench, but anything that you have that's 10 millimeter and get in there, um, you're gonna wanna do the same thing, loosen it up and make sure that the connection is not stained. These newer cars are a little tighter. Just gotta make sure that this thing is loosened enough. You can get it off. Don't pry too hard because you don't wanna break anything. Wiggle a little bit, usually we'll get it going. There it goes. All right, and then the same thing as the other side. Just make sure that nothing is touching. We don't want it to start up again. Now we wait for the full hour to make sure that the juice is gone before we start disconnecting any of the other electrical components and then we can get started on in the install. Okay, so now that we have both batteries disconnected on the driver and passenger side of the vehicle, what you wanna do first before starting any install is to make sure to open up your package, make sure all the parts that you're gonna need are in there before you get started, because you don't wanna get halfway through and then realize you don't have something to put everything back or have to wait and disable your vehicle. All right, guys, so now that we're gonna get started, the first thing to do is we need to take off this cowl cover and the bolts holding on this kind of intake ram air tube thing. So what you wanna do is grab your two, uh, trim removal uh, tool uh, or two flat blade screwdrivers, whatever's gonna make it easier for you. What you wanna do is easily kind of separate the top of the plastic push pin from the bottom. So you just wanna give it a little bit of gap and then go ahead and pull out the entire thing. Um, it's easier that way. You're not gonna miss any of the pieces and you're not gonna lose it because they are completely separable. So you don't wanna pull it off and then miss one of these. You are gonna need these to reinstall. Um, there are a total of 14. So just take your time, get them all out. Um, once you loosen them with the tool, if you have this, it just makes it a lot easier. 
Um, I just put them aside to make sure I don't lose any. Uh, there's 12 of them along the front. And then we got two way back here. Uh, for me, I got a little step stool to make it easier. Um, but again, whatever helps you get it done. It doesn't matter where they go. They're all pretty much the same type of clip. So you don't really have to remember that order at all. But try not to break them. Uh, the more you take them off and put them on, they do get a little fragile. Uh, but otherwise, this is probably one of the simpler parts of doing this install and removal. So now you'll take these, put them aside, like I said, you don't want to lose any of them. Uh, and then uh, there's a little rubber that goes inside the fender that kind of holds it in. So just kind of pull it in a little bit and it should super easily just pop off and then put this aside and make sure no one steps on it because this is a very expensive piece, All right? Next, what I'm doing, obviously I'm grabbing my electric tool here. This is the 10 millimeter socket with the chuck on it. And basically what we're gonna do now is remove there are two bolts on the corner of this little air intake, which you're gonna take them out. Super easy. So there's one, and then there's one more right here. And again, these just hold in this kind of ram air portion that shoves the air into your air box. So go ahead and verify it is nice and loose. All right, and then don't take it out yet because we have some wires that are attached to it. Uh, you'll use also your trim piece or removal tool or a flat blade as well. Uh, next, what we're gonna do is disconnect the sensors that are on the stock intake. Uh, that way we don't pull or pinch any wires. And then we'll get into removing the box and loosening the clamp from the turbo. And we'll pull this thing out as a whole unit. So what you wanna do is look. We'll move the camera over here so you can see what we're gonna do next. All right, guys, so the next step to get this install is done is to remove uh, the sensors and the wiring from all the plastic uh, retainers. So what you wanna do first is you're gonna use your trim tool or a flat blade. You're gonna come in here and pop this off of this intake tube. Make sure that the wires are nice and loose. Then you're gonna look, there should be another one down here. So you're gonna do the same thing. Again, just wiggle, wiggle, pull and wiggle should come right out or you just break it like I did and there it goes luckily this is just a two-piece clip so you'll just reconnect it once you're done it slides right back in and then this part will snap right back in to the holder down here okay next step is to remove the clips now these are a little bit more difficult some of these are just push clips so you just want to press them in so you just want to check them make sure what moves sometimes they kind of clip with it so you just want to make sure that you're depressing and wiggling at the same time usually i use a little tiny flat blade to kind of get in here and kind of separate it that makes it a little easier there it goes so what you'll want to do is there's a little tab on the inside, so you'll just go in there, you'll raise that up, and as you raise it up, you'll wiggle it off and pull it down. All right, so we've taken off this first sensor. Now what we want to do is take our flat blade screwdriver. You're gonna come in right at the top of this gray little tab, and you're gonna come back with it. As you come back with it, you'll see it slides and it stops. Once it stops, go ahead and don't force it. Grab a part of it and just wiggle back. Once you start wiggling back, your sensor comes off and now we are free and clear. So now all the wires are off. We tuck them away, make sure they don't get damaged. We'll just put them aside. Our next goal is to now remove the hose clamp. They say the easiest way is to just do the turbo one and take this out as an entire unit. So we're going to try that first to make sure it is true. Uh, so what you want to do is grab what I'm using is going to be obviously my electric wrench. Okay, so like I said, the next step is to get this entire piece out. It should be loose. We just gotta pull out on some rubber grommets. Now down deep, it's kind of hard to see at this angle, but there is a hose clamp and luckily the factory does do it with it facing up. So if you can, you're just gonna try to get on top of that thing and loosen it up as much as possible. You'll see it move. 
Once it's done, it'll unsnap. You should be then able to wiggle and break loose this tube. Once that tube is loose, um, what you're supposed to do now is just wiggle the entire air box and try to break loose the rubber grommets. All right, there it is. Making sure not to mess with your batteries. And now this whole piece should come out as one unit. All right, so now what we're doing is we're grabbing the obviously the tube supplied by SMB filters. We're gonna take our sensor. Uh, what we've done now is we are gonna go ahead and put on this kind of adapter they send with it. It's like a hard plastic adapter, which you're gonna go ahead and slide on. It has little grooves on it, which fit right to the sensor. And then next you're gonna use this kind of like gasket material to put on the tube itself. You're gonna go ahead and slide it in and then go ahead and use the supplied hardware that came with it originally to secure it to the actual tube. So again, we're just gonna go ahead and slide these in here. Not gonna work. So what you're gonna do is use the supplied hardware from SNB, which are these longer Phillips head screwdriver adapters. So you're gonna go ahead and get those started. All right, so now that we have the first sensor started on the tube, what you wanna do is again, take the adapter, um, this one is meant for universal, so some of the trucks have a two prong, ours has a single prong. It does have an O-ring on it with this adapter. Now again, when you go to try to put it in, it's gonna be a little stiff. So what you wanna do is kind of twist and push at the same time, and then just make sure you're lining up the mounting hole to where it needs to be, okay? So once you have it in there nice and snug, again, you'll go ahead and take this that kind of felt little gasket, put it on, and then now you will mate that to the tube. And then you will grab the uh, supplied soft hardware, uh, which are these two screws and get those started as well. That way we are secure. So we'll go ahead and get this going. And obviously we'll secure it with our screwdriver. We just wanna get these kind of started. That way they're secure and ready to go. All right. And again, don't over tighten it. You just want to make sure that it's nice and snug. Kind of just making sure that the gasket material is sealing off any of any holes. That way nothing is leaking out of the tube. There you go. And again, that's why I'm using hand tools. Nothing electric with this type of stuff, just because these sensors are very sensitive and you don't want to break anything. All right, so now the tube has all the sensors. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the hose clamps to it uh, with the actual silicone coupler. So this coupler right here is gonna be the coupler that goes from our tube to the turbo. So you just wanna make sure that you're mounting it in the proper location. So the easy way to orientate that is you wanna look at the tube make sure that SMB is facing up. This is the part that's gonna go into the box. This is the part that's gonna go onto the turbo. And then you can tell by mating it, which side is gonna go where. So the larger side is gonna go on our side of the tube. And then the smaller side is gonna to go to the turbo on the vehicle. So we'll go ahead and get this on. Again, their materials are very stout. So just kind of wiggle it a little bit, get it on there. You'll see that it's seated against the collar. So you just make sure that it's on there like that. And then what you want to do is take both clamps. Again, orientating it, understanding you're going to have to tighten these. So you just want to kind of line them up in a way that the bolt or the head of this clamp is facing up. So go ahead and line those up like that. What you want to do is slide this colored one over just to kind of hold it there. And then this first one, we're going to go ahead and tighten because it's going to hold the tube now. And for now, since we're off the car, we're gonna go ahead and just tighten the one that holds it to the tube with our Phillips. And then when we go to install it, uh, we'll snug it up with the 5 16 once we have it on the vehicle. And that way we know we are good and steady and nothing's gonna slip off under boost. Make sure it's on the collar evenly before over tightening it. You don't want it to slip off, pinching or anything like that. So make sure it's even. And again, just make sure it's snug, it's not coming off. And we'll go ahead and leave this one loose because that one we're gonna slide over the turbo once we put it on the vehicle. 
Okay guys, so the next step is we're gonna attach a bracket to our main box. That bracket right here is gonna have a grommet in it, which is gonna go into one of the stock locations to make sure that this is secured when it's installed. You are gonna bolt from the inside out. So what you wanna do is take this bracket, the hole is gonna to go towards the top of the box because that's where the grommet's gonna sit. And then you're gonna have supplied hardware, which is two of each, which is one bolt and one washer. So you wanna go ahead and get those started. Um, again, from the inside, you're gonna line up this bracket, whole side up, there's holes in the front. Go ahead and slide the bolt through, washer first, then bolt. Go ahead and start the threads. Just get it secure so it's on there. And then what you wanna do now, Grab your second set, same thing. Go ahead and put your bolt through the washer, line it up with the bracket, and go ahead and get it started. Make sure you just take your time, make sure nothing gets cross-threaded. You'd hate for that to happen, and then if you ever need to take it out, it's not secure. Okay, so now once you got it in there, you have a couple options. I'm gonna go ahead and use an extension on my electric tool as well as a 7 16 or a 10 millimeter whatever one works best for you for some reason it said 10 but 7 16 seemed to be the right size for me so i'm going to go ahead and put this through to the bolts and again just get them nice and snug so we'll start that one that one's nice and snug get that one going nice and snug what you want to do is verify that it is installed and then just give it a quick tap to make sure that it's in there good and it's not going to you know rattle loose or do anything while you're driving all right so we're all set with that so now what we're going to do is add this circular silicone insert to the box now i've been warned that these are very stiff and it takes a little bit of uh pushing so let's see what it actually entails uh when you're looking at it you want to make sure that this curved part is in the inside of the box and that this rib is around this ridge. Um, so what we wanna do is just kinda see if we can get this thing started in here. And we we'll kinda just do like a circular motion. Start on one side and just try to wedge it in. If it gets tight, you could always use like a flat blade screwdriver, but it wasn't as horrible as I was expecting. Actually went on pretty simply. And it looks like we are sealed. You just want to make sure you look on the inside, make sure that it's flush, nothing's pinched, and it looks like it's in there pretty securely. And there we go, it's in. And again, if you can't, you can use a trim tool or a flat blade screwdriver. I, I always prefer the trim tool because it's not going to do damage like a screwdriver would. There we go. Just felt it pop on. Now we're just gonna secure it. And again, make sure it's on the ridge. We don't want any gaps. When we go to install this thing, and then it come flying off on us. There we go. And since you can still see in there, just kind of rotate it and make sure that everything is secured. Once it is, and you know that you're not having any gaps, you're gonna go in and get in the clamp and tighten that on as well. So what my suggestion is, always is to hold it on a little bit. What you wanna go ahead and do is get it started tightening. Don't tighten it all the way, right? Just kinda get it so it doesn't move around on you. And then, once again, ensure that that tube is pushed all the way on and then now that you know you're good you can get in here and really tighten it down there we go now we know we're in there we're tight we're sealed nothing's coming off and what you can do is rotate it just to make sure that you feel good and give it a slight tug nothing crazy but just a nice little tug to know that you're good to go. All right. That probably took us the longest, I would say. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to install the silicone scoop seal, which is going to be this seal that's going to remake this intake because we want to make sure that we're getting fresh air into it, right? 
So, if you look at the orientation, it's gonna be on this side. And you wanna look at the diagram and make sure that you're putting it correctly in. So, when you're looking at it, it's got a little tilt to it. So you wanna make sure that it's facing the right way. And then again, there's little ridges all the way in the back here that you wanna secure it on. And it has like a little lip, as you can see. So, what you can do is, I don't wanna scratch it up, cause it looks beautiful. So we're gonna go put the plastic down. We're gonna look at the ridges the way that it is. We're gonna go ahead and line it up. And we're gonna get this thing on as far back as we can. Thinking maybe it's gonna go this way. Yeah, so just check the shape. It does go on a specific way. There it goes. All right, so it's gonna go all the way back into this groove right there. And again, just tug on it to make sure that it's nice and secure. You should be good to go. Now you have an option. There is a plug that it comes with that goes on this side. Now, some people choose not to put the plug because they want full cold air to come in from both sides. Uh, I'm gonna err on the side of caution because we do like to use our vehicle off-road. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert this plug on the side of the box. That's gonna stop debris from coming in, throwing up from your tires, water, anything you wanna do to make sure you don't hydro lock. Now again, that is a choice that you can make depending on if you live like in a dry climate, like Arizona or some other state. Um, but for me, I am gonna go ahead and use the plug, but this is an optional piece that you do not have to install. It's pretty simple. It just, again, keeps debris out of the box. Um, so that part is done. The next thing we wanna do is install the grommet into the bracket that we attach. So here's the front bracket that we attach to the box, which is gonna go on to one of our stocks. So what you wanna do is you wanna take this grommet and you just wanna wedge it through. Now this will be fun as well because it's very stiff, but you just wanna kinda just pinch it and push it through. And once you get it started, it usually should follow suit pretty easily. If not, again, you can use a little screwdriver, but just push it in and twist, and it should pop right on. Okay, so once again, we have the partially assembled SMB filter box. We do have the stock box. What we do now need to do is remove this from the stock box. Um, and there's a couple of different ways to do it. But the easiest way is just to get a flat blade screwdriver. Uh, smaller the better. And you want to wedge it in between these little tabs. Um, you should just have to give it a little wibble once you get it going. There it is. And it pops right off. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and pick up this box. We're going to install it now to the vehicle. So follow me over here. As you can tell, we have this big open spot where the stock one used to sit. Um, what I recommend is when you're installing it, go ahead and do the tube to the turbo first, then push onto the grommets because that way you have a little bit more wiggle room. If you do the grommet first, putting the tube on is gonna be a little bit more difficult. So you kind of want to wedge this in. So you want to come off the backside. You want to make sure that the back coupler gets onto the turbo. So as you can see, there's the turbo down there. We're just gonna go ahead and make sure that this tube wedges on with that coupler. Um, again, if you have a step stool, it's probably the best way to do it. It's just a little bit difficult to get the angle. You just wanna wedge that sucker on there as best you can. There we go. Wiggle it as much. <laughs> All right, use your hand. Make sure nothing got pinched on the backside, but it looks like it's on there. We're pretty good. So now you want to come back to the front of the filter, making sure we're lining up all the grommets to the stock locations. You can do that by this front grommet up here is going to kind of help you get you where you need to be. So that grommet is your first grommet in there. And then you can look inside the box to make sure that the bottom ones are also lining up. Okay, so you want to line up the grommets and kind of just push it down. It should then kind of seat itself and you'll feel it kind of snap in and then you should be good to go. All right, it's off a little bit. All right, all right. 
So now we're down, we're in the tube. We want to make sure, again, the turbo is seated. We want to make sure that all the grommets are in. If you can, reach in and make sure everything feels like it's on. And it does. So now that we have everything in, the grommets are tight, you want to make sure that everything is lined up properly. Now's the time to do the turbo clamp on the back. Again, I'm using my electric with the extension and the 516th socket. What you want to do, and what I noticed it works, is you want to push on this filter which will help you get the tube back onto the turbo. Once it's there, go ahead and get the clamp positioned so that it's obviously within the middle of the um, coupler and on the turbo. Once you have that going, you're then gonna go ahead and take your tool with the extension and start tightening your clamp. Just take your time. Again, this is not where you wanna have any leaks. And tighten down the coupler. What I like to do is tighten it a little bit, then take it and wiggle it a little bit more just to make sure that we are on. That's gonna hold it in position now, so you don't have to use both your hands to kind of steady it. And now you can kind of get down there. Now again, don't tighten it too hard because you will break the coupler. All right, so now that you're on, give it a little wiggle, make sure it's tight. Now what you wanna go back and do is tighten down the other clamp that we started originally on the tube itself to the intake. And this is why I like this flexible extension. So now we're good. And now we're gonna do the same thing on the filter. So you tighten down the filter. Make sure that's secured. And while we're in here, before we forget, we're gonna go ahead and get our Phillips and make sure that our sensors are also nice and snug, making sure no air gaps are gonna be coming out of them. Okay. Pull on them. Now, what we wanna do is go ahead and get our sensors back on this side and we're gonna plug them in. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in this flat sensor on the bottom first. So that sensor is good to go. Okay guys, so now that we're nice and secured, uh, we wanna check the connectors, come on in. What we wanna look at is on this elbow, when you'll see when you install it, it's gonna to wanna to face the opposite way. The instructions from SMB will show you how to pop open this collar and flip it this orientation, that way you're not pushing the wire against the box. That's a big major key component, so just make sure you're doing that. The next thing we're gonna do now is gonna re-add the ram air from the stock box that brings in the cold air in here. And then we're gonna go ahead and seal the box off with the clear plexi and the grommet that goes around it. So, first thing you wanna do, obviously you're gonna grab your stock inlet tube. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna wedge it on. So you kinda of just wanna like angle it in here and you're gonna use this rubber grommet is what's gonna like kinda of keep it pressured onto the tube and line it up in the stock location. You're gonna take your 10 millimeter bolts, kind of apply some pressure, lift this thing up a little bit to line up the hole and go ahead and get this bolt started. Again, don't tighten it down, just get it started so it's secure and you know it's in the right spot. Now you're gonna move on to the driver's side. Same thing, kind of line it up, get the bolt started. That way you're not cross-threading anything. Feels good. All right, so now that's in. Go ahead and grab whatever tool you're going to use, socket, wrench. Again, I'm going to use a power tool. Make sure it's on tighten. We're going to go ahead and zip this side down. Again, not super tight. Then we're going to go ahead and zip this one down. This one will tighten it in. Make sure we're good. All right. Analyze that one. So now we know that our air is going to come in, give us a good service. The filter is nice and tight. Now we go on to what I've heard is the most difficult part of this whole entire thing. And that's gonna be the plexiglass cover as well as your grommet's gonna seat it in. What you need to do now is take this cutout corner that you see and this tab, and that's what you're gonna line up first. Um, they say that's the easiest way to do it. So I'm gonna go with the experts and push that in there. And then again, just work your way around as best you can, seating it in the little channel that's provided. A little more patience probably is needed with this. 
Um, and obviously the, the closer you get to the end, the tighter it's gonna get. A couple different tricks I've heard you can use to get this done. Um, one is just manhandle it and try to get it on. The other is using your trim panel tool or a small flat blade screwdriver. That will also work if you get an issue. But just kind of curl it over the top and it should kind of go in as long as you follow it through. Obviously you can clean this off, but for installation purposes, we're just gonna get this done. Now they say to start in one corner, making sure to get this channel into this ridge to seal it. So either one side or one channel. I like to do the whole side because then I know that it's seated in there properly. And then you just wanna snap it in. That's the good thing about it. It's like a shallow channel. So you just kind of give it a little push down and in and it should seat perfectly in. The way you can check it, you can kind of slide it around and it'll stay in there. And that's basically it. So now you have the full install, big air box out of the way. Again, you want to check all your connections, electrical as well. Make sure there's no air gaps. Go ahead and get it going. And once you start it up, check for any check engine lights uh, with the RAM, just a heads up when you unplug both batteries, it is gonna throw a couple sensor uh, lights on you, your traction stabilizer control and your ABS. Do not freak out about that. What you wanna do is go ahead and start the truck up, let it run for a few minutes by itself. What it's doing, it's gonna kinda initialize all those uh, settings and then those lights should go away on their own. So don't freak out. That is something that we got some feedback on on this box, but otherwise, this is it. Now what we want to do is go ahead and put our trim panel back on. Again, this has the 14 snap-in connectors. So what you want to do is just go ahead and line this thing up. Again, the rubber, just kind of slide it in. You'll see it fit in all the holes. It should go back in the stock place. Come to the driver's side, same thing. Line it up, make sure you're good. Remember, you have the 12 in the front. You have the two in the back. Go ahead and get this started. Just grab a handful at a time and just systematically go in and push them down. All right, so verify all your pieces are in. Nothing's missing. Everything looks stock except for our beautiful new box. Uh, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or concerns, obviously reach out to American Trucks. They're great with their customer service and they understand how these products are supposed to work. Other than that, I hope you enjoy your new part and catch you on the next install. So wrapping things up here, guys, if you are looking for an extremely popular sealed enclosure for your newer 6.7 at home, be sure to check out the S&B today right here at AmericanTrucks.com.